Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be revisiting the system of Saturn and specifically its moon Enceladus and talk about a relatively recent paper that discusses the possibility of life right here. But specifically we're actually going to talk about three reasons why we now think there is probably life on Enceladus. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> Cassini mission was probably one of the greatest achievements of space exploration in the last few years. It actually explored the system of Saturn to the extent that no other mission managed to achieve since. Now, most importantly though, this mission actually got to do two things that previous missions were not able to do. One of them was an absolutely mind-blowing landing on the surface of the moon known as Titan. This is something that happened back in 2005. And the second was this. The flyby of the Enceladus plumes that allowed us to analyze the internal structure but also the composition of the moon known as Enceladus. And this in turn helped us understand not only what this moon may contain on the inside but also gave us an idea of whether it's possible for life to exist here. Now, first of all, let's actually discuss what do you need for life to exist. There are really three components. And this is, of course, based on what we know from life on our own planet Earth. The first component is liquid water. This is something that we have plenty on Earth. The second component is source of energy. Now, it could be sun, but it could also be chemical energy. And in the case of some life on Earth, specifically the life underwater, sometimes they also use things like hydrogen. This is especially true of organisms living next to hydrothermal vents, also known as white smokers. And last but not least, specific organic molecules, and usually organic molecules with really complex structure. And it just so happens that maybe, just maybe, Cassini mission discovered all three while flying across the space next to Enceladus. Now, first of all, let's actually uh, simulate the flyby right here using NASA's eyes visualization. So right here we can see Cassini mission approaching Enceladus and flying past it, but it did this several times. As a matter of fact, there were at least 12 flybys, seven of which went through the southern pole. The reason for this was because during the mission, the Cassini discovered an unusual anomaly in the uh, magnetosphere around Enceladus, and they decided to investigate the southern pole of Enceladus, where the unusual events seem to have been occurring. And so right here, we're going to see Cassini passing very close to the southern pole of Enceladus for the first time ever. This happened back in 2008. And this was the first time we got to capture some of these molecules. And this flyby happened six more times where we actually got to explore and analyze various molecules that were extracted and released by these unusual geysers on the surface of Enceladus. Now, interestingly, what we ended up discovering is everything from liquid water, hydrogen, ammonia, CO2, and most importantly, organic molecules that we didn't really expect here. Now, first of all, what kind of organic molecules are we talking about? Well, really complex ones. The ones that are usually required for the development and also evolution of life. And so a lot of this stuff seemed to have been coming off these geysers, indicating to us that something really unusual was going on there. The most recent paper that was published in Nature magazine suggested two things. First, this indicated to us that there was some sort of a complex uh, generation of organic molecules going on inside Enceladus. And second is that these organic molecules were actually deposited as a kind of a film on the surface of water that was most likely underneath the size shelf and were then released through a combination of bubbles and also the geysers that we saw right here in NASA's ice visualization. We also discovered these uh, molecules somewhere else in Saturn's system, and specifically in the E-ring 
of Saturn. If I zoom out of here and try to position myself so that the sun reflects um, the actual light here, you'll see that there is a ring that's being formed by the molecules that were released from Enceladus. This ring, although hard to see, is entirely formed by Enceladus's uh, release of these organic molecules, water vapor, and other things. We can kind of see this ring better if I zoom out of here. And you'll notice that there's an entire region right here that's basically formed by various um, molecules that were either released from Enceladus or other moons that are orbiting around Saturn. A lot of this is generated entirely through what's known as tidal dissipation and basically the effects of Saturn on various moons that it has. But most importantly, all of these rings indicate to us that for the most part, we can actually use the flybys through these rings to analyze what goes on inside of these moons. And so what all of this suggests is that, first of all, yes, we do seem to have liquid water that's required for life. We also seem to have right chemical ingredients, including organic molecules, methane gas, ammonia, and CO2 that we detected coming off right here. And we even detected molecular hydrogen. And that is something that we know for a fact is also used on Earth near these hydrothermal vents as well. So in other words, this flyby near Enceladus indicated to us that Enceladus had all three necessary ingredients for life. Now, does this mean there is life here? Well, that's something that we'll need to discover later on if we launch another mission here. For now, all we know is that Enceladus is definitely the most likely place for us to find life. It seems to have all the prerequisites and seems to even have signs that something is going on underneath those ice shelves. Something that one day might actually be some sort of microbial or multicellular life. And so all this means is that we actually need to try to launch another mission to Saturn sometime in the next few years, even though it's not currently planned at all. We definitely have to come back here and we definitely have to discover what this unusual moon hides from us. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and hopefully you learned something about Enceladus and now you know what we've discovered as of 2018. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye.